G'day and welcome back to the Talking Leadership TV podcast series. My guest today is Kevin Bennett from the Best Practice Network. He is the network facilitator for Queensland and New South Wales. With over 30 years of international industry experience, Kevin has implemented a number of operational and business excellence programs across many sectors. He has a Master's in Quality and Environmental Management, a Graduate Certificate in Operational Excellence. He is a Certified Net Promoter Score NPS Facilitator and an accredited lead auditor for ISO 9001. He's passionate about bringing together people and processes to one, grow and two, build capability and three, to deliver excellence in customer service and process performance. I'd like to thank Kevin and the network for helping develop some leadership podcasts last year, 13 in total. Today, we're going to focus specifically on what are we learning as leaders post COVID. So from a leadership perspective, we just wanted to get into what has been learned, where are the challenges and where are the opportunities when it comes to leadership in a post COVID situation. Thanks again for your support of the podcast. I'll hand over to Kevin. Kevin, it's great to have you back, mate. Um, As I said in the introduction, we've been working for quite some time on uh, jointly branded podcasts around this uh, leadership topic area. And let me start at first principles here we've had what we've experienced through COVID for the last three years what's your big picture sense of how that's impacted leadership from from your perspective mate yeah thanks Eric and it's been an interesting um interesting opportunity as you say to reflect on what's happened the last the last couple of years and uh, there's a lot we can talk about but I've really picked on on three or four that I think that I've experienced um, and also what I'm hearing across the businesses, as you say, across the network. So I, I think part of the last three years has been this real test about this, this manage versus lead. So, you know, people may have called yourself leaders, um, but it's been really tested about um, our ability to, yes, get the day-to-day done, but also can we really lead the organization, lead our teams? Can we do the motivation? For me, there's definitely been a whole testing about although we're in leadership positions how many of us have been converted straight back to just fight the fires get onto operational to survive to those that i think have now definitely you can see that coming out the those that have really kept on with that leadership focus and are now able to build on what's happened um over the last couple of years so so definitely for me there's this real but i also think it's an opportunity which i'll come on to a bit later is uh there's a lot of organization realizing there may be some gaps in their leadership which they now need to pick up on and maximize in in the future and because of that one i think what the second one that goes to me is about the importance of good culture and good relationships with within an organization you know we can all go back to those early you know, days in 2020 when we all thought we'd be okay for a couple of weeks and uh, things are going on. But I, my experience and what we picked up is the culture within organizations have been severely tested. Um, and you've really benefited as an organization if you've been doing the right things for the three, four, five years before. You know, you just could not go, it's, I know, 1st of March, 2020, we're second of March. Now let's have a great coacher or I need you to do all this extra stuff because business and people just don't work that way. So definitely over the last couple of years, the businesses that I'm seeing come out very strong. Now the ones that had those really good basics in place, good culture, open culture, great relationships to all levels of leadership and really alignment back to, you know, what the business is all about. So I think those two have been, I mean, really key for me that management leadership and then what that is meant in terms of the culture and the relationships and being able to have those tough discussions or having that point team, we need to step up this week because there's a problem or there's a customer need or, or there's a supply chain issue. You know, I, I can remember, I am mean, even going back to the UK um, many, many years ago now, uh, 14, 15 years ago, everyone was talking about work from home, remote working, and there's a whole debate about it and never work. But were we really that well set up in terms of technology, systems, processes, you know, um, the good old cybersecurity one that's now coming up around about having all this data on 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 remote access but that goes back to me to the management and the leadership stuff so a lot of and i think this is where a lot of companies got caught out is 
is a lot of people in leadership positions struggled to lead their teams remotely because they didn't have that command control. I weren't there in the office. I weren't able to follow things through. So, so in terms of, I think ultimately, um, and I think once we get the right hybrid model working in terms of this remote working, I think there's a big upside, but we've got to work out what is the right level. Yeah. And what is the right way of working? And um, some jobs need to do it. Some, some jobs don't need to do it as we know. Uh, and I fully respect those people that had to stay in and go in every day and um, despite everything else. But I think there's an opportunity here to get some real upsides if we can get, and it's really pushed technology, you know, where we were with Zoom, with other, you know, technology leaps have been massive in the last 12, 24 months. And I don't think we would have got there if we hadn't had what we had. So I'm, I'm hoping to pick up, I'm coming out of this COVID is quite optimistic for us. And I think that where we'll come up as, as we go through. The last one for me, though, and I think is the whole governance and cyber and, you know, the way we're dealing with it. I think um, I think we've been a little bit exposed, like you say, with remote working, with technology, um, with some of the systems that we've got. Um, and, and we just need to step up as leaders and say, you know, are we really governing the business correctly? Um, and how does that lead into things like culture and people and cyber? And so there's this whole need to say, are we really building a robust business as leaders who can cope with these demands now? Because touch wood, hopefully there's none of the COVID, but I think one thing is certain there's going to be something else that's going to come along. There's some massive issues there and they all seem to have an interrelated thread and that's the idea of, of what at what level do we need effective leadership and what does that look like in our organisations when you yeah. get hit with something like the pandemic. Now, um, to be fair to any of the businesses, all of the businesses in their economy that went through COVID, we were all tested to one degree or another. I guess it's if if you didn't have those things established, well established in the business, uh, productive, positive culture, good um, relationships across uh, within and across organisations. That idea of when do you manage and when do you lead, and is a manager really a leader performing two functions simultaneously, leading and managing? and trying to be innovative and, and looking for innovation where they can versus the implementation of what does a new working environment look like, so the remote working, hybrid working topic that you brought up. And then to add to all that, um, what what is the state or lack thereof quality of our governance arrangements? And and you hinted at that as it relates to cybersecurity. Th these are uh, massive issues on their own that we could do um, multiple podcasts on to talk about, but I, I think, um, yeah, I, I get that sense from, from the engagement that I've had through your network and what I'm seeing as I as I as I uh, look at different media channels and particularly looking at LinkedIn and what people are talking about. These things seem to be common to most businesses. It's not unique to any one um, set of businesses. One one thing to note here that. The test for leader capability in my mind is to what degree can our leaders deal with rapid on oncoming change as part of this so what's mm. your capability around that and how do you train to, to be better to deal with uncertainty and then the bigger one for me and I, I think you've hit it on the head even though you didn't frame it this way but I, I think we're, we're talking we're not talking at cross purposes here mate is this idea of tolerance of ambiguity now all of this um mm -hmm. this is complicated stuff and no one's got the right answer to this and uh for people to potentially be talking about a one size fits all to fit this is not is not going to work because fundamentally i think um ineffective i'm not going to say bad i think ineffective leaders have been exposed here and post covid are we going to go back to pre covid conditions or are we going to see uh, a new workplace with new challenges when it comes to our teams and what our teams expect of our leaders post COVID. So I'd ask you that as yeah. a follow-up question. Do you think those that you, the organizations that you deal with, for an example, that they're leading, that our, our teams are wanting something different from their leaders? Do you get a sense of that? 
Oh, no, I, I think definitely. And I think we're, we're beginning to see that just with the whole debate about recruitment and skill shortages and, and, and things like that, that, that that's coming through. I think, you know, when you go right back to where we said before, and I want to pick up on that point is about, you know, there were some very high profile businesses that if someone had said, you know, are they sustainable? Are they profitable? People would have gone, yep, 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 tick, tick, tick. Yet very quickly, within four to six months, some key businesses were falling over, you know, and some some big brands. And and it suddenly went, wow, you know, we, you know, there was an assumption there that the leadership team would 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 have those things in place. And I think that's a fear I've got coming out as well, is that, and I think you've said it as well, is that. We, I don't think we can go back to where we run the, and led the bit of man, the way we were pre-COVID because we're in a different dynamic now. There's a different way of working. Some things we've got to learn what is still right, you know. Um, but we've got to we've got to be ready and and adapt now. And what I'm hearing um, and be interesting, and I know you've had a couple of conversations already, is is people's expectations now around you know, longevity around sustainability, around corporate governance, around, you know, working with communities, it's becoming part of the rec- the recruitment process. Um, and the recruitment process is now a two-way thing. You know, it's, I was talking with that with a member yesterday where now, now they're, they're not getting the numbers coming through and they now feel they are being interviewed more than they're interviewing the graduates. Uh, and they're coming well armed. You know, they want to know what are you doing? How, you know, one, one said, one person said, they want to know how they've performed in the last three years. You know, some very direct questions about not what can you do for me? It's about, are you sustainable? You know, what have you done here? What's your financial performance been like? You know, what's your culture? And it's it's really interesting around, have we got this right now? Are we ready for for? picking up on these things are we building the the right culture and you know a term that's come across a lot of time there was you know everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face you know so is it what's what's our ability to 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 deal with it when we go whack you know um but our just get your head down and get it sorted is okay but what are we learning from, from, from the process so Again, the optimist here, and I can see it around a number of organizations. There's some organizations who are really doing some big things because they're reflecting on their, what have we learned? What do we know that's good? What do we know we need to change? And almost uh, what are things we need to get rid of? You know, what do we need to get rid of and and, and stop doing? So I, I think there's lots of really good stuff that's coming out of here. Um, but I don't think you can just say, let's go, you know, whatever we were doing in 2019, we just revert back to. It's not going to happen. You're not going to survive. Yeah, I, unfortunately, I get the sense that some businesses wrote out the worst of COVID and are wanting to trade uh, and be what they were <laughs> pre-COVID. And I, I think there's there's some um, potential landmines there. But, you know, um, I, I, I can't speak for the motivations of individual leadership groups other than to suggest that if you haven't, haven't taken some degree of learning of what's gone on, then more more, yeah. more the fool you for not doing that. And if something, if the proverbial hits the fan down the track, then that's on you in your capacity as a leader. And it, look, um, I think you've yeah. helped answer the, the second question around what's this revealed about leadership in Australia? I think... The conversation around around what is best practice when it comes to leadership, um, that question around what does fit for future leadership look like, I think agility yeah. and thinking, um, uh, a tolerance for those things that are going to be ambiguous in your environment, understanding what strategy looks like, understanding that there are there is a need to interpret as best you can what future opportunities look like. And then the the bigger question for me is is how do you then enable and recruit the next generation to run through your business as either junior leaders or the promotion of existing yeah. people? And I I don't know how well that conversation's been had, you know. And and I and I don't say this without um, having some idea that the the market is at the moment very much in the in the hands of those that are applying for jobs, but. Do our existing models of recruitment are they necessarily geared for the new 
work environment. And, um, you know, I've, I've heard the same thing that you were telling me that I've had, uh, I've had discussions with some friends and colleagues of mine that I've gone for jobs that have said the same thing that they've put some questions to the people, rec- you know, interviewing them. And in some yeah. instances it's yeah. thrown them for a six because they didn't expect to be quizzed on, um, on the role. And in fact, potentially the attitude in the recruitment space is you should be lucky that we're looking for people and offering you the job where yep. I don't think that's the mentality that that, that is no. now present in potential applicants. Am I am I reading that correct, at least from what you've been? Yeah, yeah, no, I think you are. And I think that's a it's a good and I'm just going back to um meetings I've had this week, you know, that that ability to deal with ambiguity, right? It almost almost wake up in the morning and go, all right, let's turn this, let's just see what's going to come away and deal with it. But, you know, we're talking with, uh, especially in the food and the agriculture, you know, and some of those healthcare businesses, like, you know, dealing with some of the weather things that we've got going at the minute, you know, is, is about, they've, they've got to get on with it and they've got to do it in the, in the right way. So their ability to go, well, okay, roads are closed. What am I doing? We're stuck. We don't know what to do. We we don't know how to go. And I think listening to a great um a, a news report with the floods up in the Kimberley and 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 obviously uh, respect and regards to those people there, make sure everything's okay. It's just talking about those food agency that are having to adapt things on an hour by hour basis. You know, a road was open. They had to get a helicopter in. They've had to get boats in. That ability to think and be agile, you know with a common cause and still get the right things done, but do it safely and, and do everything else is, is a core skill, you know, is, is a massively core core skill. And I think there's some great learnings. And I think we've spoken about this before that we can take from emergency teams. You know, I did a lot of work in, in, in emergency departments in hospitals before, and it's, although it's a harrowing experience, just that knowing what to do, how to do it, and how to react and be fragile. Sports teams, you know, military teams and stuff like that is that ability to, I'm okay, but now this has happened. Think through it, but come up with the with the right decisions. But just going, but I think going back to the recruitment side, that's almost now what your people have got to be looking for. So we're just going to be looking at running an event on employability skills. So it's a, people are saying, okay, if I've got to make a choice. I want to bring on board people that have got the right skills and make they're really employable for what I want to be doing, but let's understand what they are. You know, what, so what, what skills do you really looking for? I, you know, I may be looking for a a shop floor operator, an office admin or sales manager, but that's a technical role, you know, and in most cases within reason, you can teach or train that in. What I do need in this new world is people that can problem solve, that can teamwork, that can be agile, that can deal with ambiguity, yeah, that can step up or step back sometimes. The unfortunate side of the the culture debate, and again, this is one potentially for another discussion down the track, but it's worth bringing up here, even at, at the macro level, is when we talk about culture, I, I guess if it's not going, if if the organisation is not doing well or there's some issues with your leadership at different levels within the business and that really does reflect on the senior leaders in the organisation and what is it that they're not putting their finger on in the business that that needs to be addressed. And uh, again, going back to what did we learn from COVID as leaders, that that process will have drawn out leaders that are not not well suited to the culture in which they're leading or yep. potentially if they're not doing the things that, that they need to do to stay ahead of the game that they may not have the skill sets required so that's not an attack on the individual leader it's more do you have the knowledge skills and abilities to be the leader that that particular organization needs you to be yep. and that that issue has come up a lot in our um, our discussions through the network and in, in my podcast thing, what came what came up quite strongly for me out of that is if you don't learn from that, you're just going to repeat that mistake or you're going to leave that organisation and take potentially toxic thinking around this to another organisation. So the fact yep. that you're telling me that businesses are looking at what are the skill sets we need and what can we train in-house is in some ways a qualitatively different way to recruit or at least plan for what do you need in your business 
going forward and that 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 can lead hopefully productively to understanding what skill gaps your current workforce has that you can either train up or yep. that you need to buy into the business into the future so yeah no I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying a lot of our leaders managers are in those positions purely because of tenure or they're in the wrong place at the right time or you know so you know a lot of these leadership positions and don't get me wrong there are some very good ones there are, are there not necessarily because of their great leadership skills they're just there because it's tenure and everything else so we've got to be we've got to be fair on that they're they're you know they're there and almost doing trying to do a great job but they've not been given the support either you know and they and you think some of those some of those people have had to deal with covid supply chain weather issues you know I, the amount of people i talked to who literally said started this great new job in jan 2020 and within the first 10 weeks dealing with a global pandemic well where was that in the job description you know or where was where where was that in the training package i did last year what is the responsibility of of organizations to back and help their leaders when the proverbial hits hits the fan and it it still in some ways comes back to is leadership a solo endeavor or is it a cross organizational endeavor so are you looking to build yeah. leader capacities across your team so that everyone has that ability to think on their feet and that you find solutions collectively rather than just leave it to one person to find yeah. that solution um i i found that in in uh that was a great uh concern for the military leaders that i spoke to that you're training your team to understand their role and the role below them and the role above them so that they understand where they fit in that greater scheme of of yeah. the the organization that they're in and i don't believe in my heart of hearts that we train or build our organizations with that in mind that you've got people that are multi-skilled and capable to fill in the gap so to speak when that needs to happen and and there's reasons you know hundreds of reasons for that but i think optimally if you're going to build um, high functioning high performance teams you need them to be able to step up when um they need to step up or yep. that you don't just make what which you, which i think personally is a wrong assumption that there there are fixed leaders and then everyone else is a follower i think we all have that responsibility to some extent yep. and that that's going to be proven and it's being proven now in in the um the disaster zones in the kimberley and, and our thoughts go out to uh, the people living in that region, that the people that are trying to help are not do not doing it on their own. They're doing it in teams and trying to work out how do we yeah. deal with some of these issues when we can't get past yeah. a flooded road. You know, what do we need to do to to get the um the best outcome? Yeah. So yeah, no, no, I'm hearing you, mate. I'm hearing you, Kevin. Final area to discuss, if if we can, is um it's a two parter positives that came out of COVID, if you can quickly run through a few and then what you think are still the challenges ahead. Yeah. Okay. Very, very, very relevant at the minute. And I think going to be around us for, for a while there. Um, one of the real positives, I think that I've, I'm really picking up and we are going back to this culture and relationship. I think there's a, there's a greater focus and awareness around your people within your business and the people that you support, you know, up, up and down the supply chain. So we've all been impacted somewhere along the line, you know, where, as we said before, we've been tested either directly or indirectly um, and some more severely than others. So for me, just businesses being more aware of people, relationships, what, you know, the mental health issues, sickness issues, I, I think is, is, is a big upside. Um, and to me, that links to the community as well, the value of a strong community and, you know, just being able to go down and, and go to a coffee shop or go to a local store um, and and the, the, the way you can influence your local community, you know, a good, strong business is really does feedback, the multiplier effect back back into a business um and i'm really hoping we we continue to do that one and there's some great examples of large medium and small businesses that are now realizing get involved with the community support your people you know um and and allow them to build that that awareness that that brand because because if you do that that's a potential people supply chain for you you know, there's there's a there's a potential doing the right thing. So so I'm I think it's one of the positives for me, and for me that links back into the 
support local buy local um and local sovereign you know sovereign capability the terminology is is that our and our supply chain and the way we look at them i think will change so we we're going to need to want to look at local suppliers and local could be could be national local but also just just within your regions and you know who's around there who can we help support because we've got used to and this is a bit of a watch out some of the challenges because we've not had the imports we've got used to or had to use to working with local suppliers local people there's actually been a big upside to that right it's a potential downside because there are some gaps but i think we can really build on that as as a positive in terms of building local communities and, and building regions um the other one i think i've got is there are some good bits who are really just getting back to the basics so you know let's make sure we deliver what we're going to say we're going to deliver when we're going to do it at the price we're going to do with it um so there's a lot now about going back into good processes good governance good systems good products good good quality which builds into then how you use your networks so you know i, th I think i may have mentioned a couple of times there's a there's a back to the future for me in terms of networks and clusters and collaboration you know who do i really know who can i work with who's looked after me um there's a converse to that is who's not looked after me and who do i not want to work with um with within that reason but really there's some, there's some great opportunities to build on some really good solid businesses but use that to build your local community and 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 set ourselves up for the future yeah so we're really strong we're really sustainable there's local businesses and uh, there's local people who are willing to to engage with the business so what was some if you go back to the impacts here you know that it really there's a, some big upsides out of here and i can already see some great like I say, large, medium and small who are really beginning to go down that way now. And I think are going to come out a lot, a lot stronger. The flip side to that, the challenge is, is, is again, is, is, is as usual, there's ups and downs to both of these. I think the skills labor shortage isn't going to go away short term. Um, but I think we have to realize that and understand that that's something now that you can say, so what can I do better? So now we're back to our recruitment policies, you know, our retention. So how well do we develop our own people? Yeah. How well do we keep our own people? Who have we got the right people in the same time? The lay, the, the general people shortage um, is really going to challenge again, uh, our leadership teams in about how, how they handle that. Cause Chasing the money is not working anymore. And we're, we're hearing that is that wages is still important. It'll always be important. But as we said earlier, that's not the be all and end all. You know, a wage is almost, it's like a commodity. If you're not paying X amount an hour, I'm not even going to look at you in terms of a job. Um, but once you've got me over that barrier, I'm now going to want to know all these other things about life, way of working, you know, promotion, development, cap capability type issues. So skills and labor shortage, I think, is something that's about another topic we could talk about because we're now back to migration, back to training and education systems uh, and obviously closing closing the gap. So I think that one's still going to be around, but we can do some good things. The supply chain is going to be ongoing. Um, and I think we've still not seen the full effects or impacts of that. And I'm not convinced everything's going to come back. Um, so where we, you know, I think some supply chains import wise, I don't think they're going to return because if they've come out of Europe or other countries, they're not going to be sustainable anymore because they've just, they've just, they've just fallen over. Um, so we've got to steadily start to think about back to this local what can we use maybe we've got to change some of our materials so this could be a great sustainability you know our energy and all this type of thing now there's a great opportunity to rethink about where you get things from my fear is a lot of people are going to go back well i'll just go back to where i was before i'll just go back to buying in bulk yeah and then we lose all that goodwill we lose all that local support and i think that's you know from i always tell business now do the right things now so you make it difficult for when your customer has to make a choice. Yes, they may want to save two cents an item, but they look at it and go, yes, but I save two cents, but I lose great customer service. I, I lose a relationship. You know, I lose flexibility. So I think that's a, that's, that's a big one for me. Um, and currently, just the challenge, cost of doing business. We're all struggling with this now. Fuel the way it is, the energy costs just general life costs, you know, in terms of we're all, you know, interest rates and those type of things. 
it's just something we've just got to keep keep on the radar and make sure we're just doing the right things but if we're remote working people are not traveling you know or where we're not we don't have to transport things over the whole country or on ships we can get it locally i think we can do but we've got to think holistically here because ultimately we still need people in the communities there so they can come and work for us therefore that we can give back to the community so i i still think there's more upsides than downsides if from a leadership perspective we have that bit of humility and we're, we have that bill of be willing to be agile and work. It's a whole of business coming together, not just one leader trying to make all the decisions. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely see where you're coming from, mate. And and in fact, one thing that strikes me as interesting here is that without you saying it, saying it there, there's an innovation challenge there waiting for people to take a hold of. What it, you know, uh, you're talking about things like reducing cost of production uh buying local sourcing local i think that that kicked off around midway through in my mind at least from the industries that i was keyed into around supporting local and buying local to yeah. future proof yeah. yourself from other shocks now like you said there may be some things that you can't get local but that then creates that that scarcity and that opportunity for someone to step into that gap and go well why can't we yeah. do this have we thought about doing something else? And that that will provide those opportunities that you talk about. And like you, I don't want to look at um, and uh, stay stuck in looking at the negatives here, but it's trying to understand the whole picture. And there are some things that we need to look out for from a leader perspective, um, most of which in my mind still is your team. So are they okay? Are they mm-hmm. dealing with those cost of living pressures? What can the business do to help with that uh the, your familial commitments if you have them what what is your non-work life and how does that impact on you being productive in the workplace and so um pressures yeah. external to the business is now going to become in my think my way of thinking i could be wrong here but i think if i'm looking into the um into that that uh, that uh, looking into the future and trying to to be a nostradamus on some of this is looking to see that the health and welfare of your people is becoming more important to you is going to be something that in potential employees and current staff are going to be judging you on into the future because what yeah. what, what keeps some people in roles is have has X business shown a commitment to me? Um, and if that's not a reciprocal yeah. thing, uh, people walk and that's definitely a lack of leadership in my, in, to yeah. my way of thinking. So um Kevin, thank you for sharing this with me. I know we're going to be having a lot more conversations and to just to flag for those that are watching this uh, video cast or will listen to the podcast that myself and the network will be doing a lot more podcasting in 2023. So keep an eye out for some um, co-branded podcasts in the future. And again, Kevin, I think we'll be having this conversation at the end of 2023 to see how things have panned out over <laughs> Uh, over 12 months so if you're up for it we'll uh we'll keep talking man oh no that i look forward to it and i think it's a it's going to be a great 2023 with lots of lots of new learnings and um, let's look forward to a very productive new year and and let's keep talking kevin one final thing before we go what's your message to uh those not just in the network but those that might be listening that aren't in the network about the positives for 2023 from a leader perspective before we go oh i I think the the real positive to me we we have some great leaders we have some great businesses uh we can do this we we i think we are known that australia is actually recognized to being a very innovative country so we 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 can do these things just just remember let's let's make sure that it's a win-win for everybody look after yourself look after your team and uh, let's make sure we all have a very prosperous and productive 2023 Nice, a very nice way to finish the podcast. Thanks, everyone, and we'll catch everyone on the next episode of Talking Leadership TV. I'd like to thank Kevin from the Best Practice Network for his time. If you can help me grow the podcast, please drop a like or subscribe. More leadership content on the way. Thanks again for your support, and we'll catch you all on the next episode of Talking Leadership TV.